Whether your beer is in a bottle, can, or glass, kick back and relax. It's Better on Draft. We are live what should be episode 279 of the Better on Draft podcast, but this is in fact just the news segment for February 4th, 2022. Our guest had a little bit of issues and was unable to make it, but the show must go on as we have prepared a bunch of news articles to talk about today. But for uh, myself, I am Ken, and I am drinking uh, an O'Doul's Amber uh hey O'Doul still exists so i am uh drinking this it looked pretty good grabbed it at total wine um went to total wine for the first time in michigan and walked out with a couple hundred dollar bill so that was my last weekend what about you wendy how are you and what are you drinking uh, i am fantastic i have not been to total wine yet even though i um really loved it when i was in atlanta so i do want to go i actually have i grabbed the wrong thing I have got a Pliny the Elder, uh, thanks to um, ladies who love me. And I'm also double fisting because we were going to be talking to an RTD supplier. So I had uh, decided to make myself a little cocktail with the Norden Pink Aquavit and a little bit of zero sugar burners. I just kind of threw it together and it's actually really tasty. I'm pretty impressed with it. I love I I did get for my triumphant return to alcohol when I finally decide to uh start drinking again, which will probably just be like the winter beer fest. I mean triumphant return. I mean, yeah. Uh why not? I I still got so much NA stuff to finish too. Um I I bought a bunch of extra stuff thinking I was gonna drink it over the last week and I just didn't. So uh we're just gonna finish this up and then we'll uh we'll come back. But I think maybe maybe just the, the fall or winter beer fest. Might as well make it a big day um celebration with a bunch of craft beer. But uh what do you got over there, Dan? You know, I've gone back to drinking the good old uh vodka soda. Thought I'd go back to the good old stuff that we were drinking back in December. Um. So Oh, go on, tell man. me, yeah, tell me, how did your trip to Total Wine go? How was their NA beer section? I'm kind of curious. The NA beer section of uh, Produce Station in Ann Arbor, which is a small little grocery store, is actually a lot bigger. Uh, but that's not to say how small it is for Total Wine, but I just kind of expected more. Um, Total Wine, I didn't see they have any, they had. NA wine and NA beer. I didn't see any NA uh, spirit, so I didn't see any whiskey um, or anything like that for the site itself. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the whiskey selection was really solid. Um, everything was fairly well categorized, so you just kind of sorted by location. Um, so Japanese or, you know, all the scotches together, all the Michigan whiskeys together, all the American whiskeys together. Um, so it was, it was fun, but the NA stuff was pretty lackluster. Um, nothing that I bought there. I couldn't have also got at produce station. Yeah. I'm not surprised it, out here too. Their NA section is really small. Um, I don't even know if I've looked for the NA, uh, spirits like you were talking about, but literally outside of one or two options, as far as NA goes, um, you really can get it just about anywhere. I was actually kind of surprised with the kind of store that they are. Yeah, especially because that's my my news article today, which, well, let's, you know what, let's just hit the button and go. Here is Robert with the Beer News. Dan, you were supposed to chug the vodka soda. I'm not chugging vodka soda. What do I look like, Rob? I don't sit here and (laughs) down glasses of whatever all at once. Uh, Well, I did post on the TikTok last night. I did a chug myself. Um, oh, I had nice. the, the Brooklyn breweries, uh, hoppy Amber, I think is what it's called. Um, and a, of course. Um, so I had that and that was fun. And I also did one before the show to put on the TikTok Cause I mean, you gotta be TikToky, uh, <laughs> the clock app or whatever, uh, people refer it to. Um, they call it the clock, the clock app. Oh, I mean, I, I think you should just call, that it, what they call it the, the Kesha <laughs> app. Cause she made that song TikTok. Um, oh. 
But I, yeah, I, I, I did a little beer chug before the show. But uh, as we don't have a guest, my article for today, as we'll kind of start off with the news, um, which is huge, which is uh, Athletic announced that they're actually going to be increasing the cost of all of their craft beers. Now, here in Michigan, you can only distro Athletic beer. You cannot purchase it for delivery, um, even though I've tried many times. Uh, you just simply cannot buy the beer online to get it shipped because Michigan considers any a beer as regular beer and therefore you can't ship regular beer in Michigan dumb rules um so they are yeah very ridiculous uh they actually sold twice as much as they expected in January of 2022 so their sales skyrocketed to the point where if you guys remember back in episode 221 uh which is almost 2 years ago now uh they were opening up their second location out in San Diego. Uh, one of the brewers was actually in the San Diego uh, brewery, kind of getting it ready to start production. And now they're about to open a third location later this year. Um, they c- currently state that they claim roughly 50% of all NA craft beer. Um, so for every two craft beer NA beers, I feel like a little redundancy there. Every two NA craft beers, one of them is an athletic. Um, can a brewery, my question to you guys is that when, when you have such a um, hard fought market for craft beer, can a small brewery come in with an NA beer now when athletic is you know, sponsoring Olympic ads and on TV and, you know, they're as much as their craft beer, just because of their size, they're doing six figure barrels, which not many breweries are doing right now already. Um, so can, can a NA brewery or can a brewery just make an NA beer now and enter the market without just getting completely engulfed by these big, uh, the big brewery that is athletic. I mean, I think so. I mean, it's no different than, you know, a Budweiser, Bud Light versus some of these craft beer um, or any craft beer out there. So I don't know why someone couldn't. Of course, it's probably not going to be as big. I mean, Athletic got to the market in such a big, like wide range faster than anyone else. I don't know how you counter it, but there is definitely room. I'm I, trying to think if I've had an Athletic and I can't say I have. So I, I mean, have some no of these idea how they got to the market as fast as they did because that's a good they, point. They kind of just showed up and exploded, um, and they they hit a market that was needed, but they also have a following because they treat their beer as if it's just a regular soda, like they promote their beer as um, you know for for. Honestly, for athletes, they promote it for people who are, um, you know, they, they have a commercial going out that's talking about uh, the lunch beer and the uh, after workout beer and pre workout beer and the everything beer, I think is what they call it now. Um, but yeah, when- I see that commercial every two seconds. Sorry. Oh, I, I, I'm not going to actually- lie. I drink my NA beers at lunch. Do you really? Yeah. I really want a beer, but I know I don't need to have any of the alcohol because I still got a lot of shit to do. So I'll grab an NA beer or a hop water. I actually brought one up just in case I get thirsty. But yeah, yeah, hop yeah water I'll is drink good. an we, NA beer at lunch. We, we have Michigan hop water, which is out of beards. Um, but yeah, I I don't think I've ever drank a NA beer like during the day. Just kind of like, oh, you know, I want a beer. Like for me, uh, I mean, I've got my hop tea. Like I love my hop tea. I got like three boxes right down here of hop tea but beer itself i don't know i feel like i just need to be in the right mood to be uh drinking beer i'm always in the right mood to drink beer (laughs) not gonna lie i mean don't get me wrong too i've also uh while working um at previous jobs i haven't done it with this one but at previous jobs i have definitely gone on the liquid lunch before um (laughs) I don't do that. Oh, <laughs> I, I think your lying face is not very good, Wendy. Uh, I'm a terrible I, liar. We already know that. I used to be really bad when I worked at uh, a bank, a local bank, and I would go to Muldoon's um, over in Rochester, and they would have tall boys of Killians for like two fifty, 
and I would have a, a cheeseburger and a tall boy for like six bucks and just, you know, but I, I would have more than one tall boy and then go back to work because, yeah, you know, it's only people's money. Right. <laughs> That's no, all it I, is. I don't uh, really do that. I mean, I you, that there's been times when I have had a beer at lunch with certain jobs, but for the most part, no. But, oh. but now that I can have an NA beer, then yeah, I can have the beer that I want at lunch and I don't have to worry about being all sloppy. Well, I think that's that kind of is akin towards the conversation we had with the gentleman from Two Roots where, you know, he uses the NA beer to pace himself where he wants something flavorful mm-hmm. whilst, you know, not getting completely smashed or, you know, mixing beer and booze. Um, but uh, Dan, I mean, this was your real big first foray into NA this past uh, month. It was. What was your opinion on some of the NA beers? What do you want to see in the market? Um, uh, like we were talking about last week, I think I brought it up. You need more NA type of stouts. There's very few of them out there. Like that Partake Dark is trash, like absolute trash. I would never buy that again. Um, I know Guinness makes an NA stout, but they only distribute it out in Ireland for some reason. And Deschutes, I'm actually looking right now. You can finally buy their Black Butte Quarter NA online, which I'm, I think I'm going to do right now so I can try it. But you really need variety. Not everyone wants to drink a lager. Not everyone wants to drink an IPA. So I think you could get more people if there's more options out there. We didn't get a chance to really ask, but when we had our interview with the CEO of Big Drop, he mentioned that when distributing beer, at least in Michigan, possibly the U.S., that they can't call it a stout. They have to call it a dark um, and I don't remember the why, like if there is a very specific reason as to why they had to do it, I'm sure it's some type of legalese that we just can't get past and we're too lazy to try to change it. Cause there's no reason to, um, but there is athletic makes a dark, um, partake obviously, as you, you mentioned, there's a lot of ambers that I noticed. Cause obviously I just had the Dos Equis, uh, or not the Dos Equis, the O'Doul's. I have a Wellbeing Amber and I have a Brooklyn Brewing Amber. Um, so I would love more beers in that, as much as there's three right there, just more beers in that category. Um, but I would also love like these seasonals, like a winter warmer, uh, like an Oberon type citrusy. <laughs> Wendy just gave me a look like no for a winter warmer. <laughs> not no. I'm not a fan of the spice beers. I- okay. Pumpkin spice, the winter warmers, I, they use way too much of the allspice, and I just don't like it. Uh, I mean, I know Dan's opinion on pumpkin beers, so I don't have to ask, ask yeah. that. But I, I would love those types of beers to enter the market a little bit more, and I'm hoping that with a massive brewery like Athletic, while they're still – you know, they, they have a bunch of um, – I don't remember what they're calling them, but they're a small batch series – where they're just kind of doing like, you know, different types of hops and different types of styles. They had an alt beer on there that I couldn't get because you can't ship beer to Michigan. Um, but yeah, I would I would love to see a, a few more breweries pop up. I think Partake is Canadian. Um, and I think obviously Big Drop and BrewDog are both European. Um, so... I, I just think we need we need a little bit more breweries to enter the market, but I think what we need is also maybe a massive shift from a brewery. Like if you bought a brewery and just turn that brewery into an NA brewery, um, you know who could do it is probably Kings and Convicts. I mean, uh, they do have like a trillion dollars, so <laughs> they can do whatever they want to do. They they seem to have a, a large sum of money that they can go spend somewhere where they could easily purchase. Um, not even like uh, a struggling brewery, but like just a brewery like they just buy ABN Bev next week. On, honestly, and this, you know, maybe if they would have bought Dark Horse, where they have the the um, the brewing capacity at Dark Horse, but. Uh, turn it into something different. Um, I mean, everyone probably is still happy that Dark Horse still exists. And now that they have Roke over there, over at Dark Horse, where they're uh, distributing both brands out of the same venue. Um, I don't know. That's just my opinion of what I hope to see in the future. I mean, I, I loved so far all of the NA beers that I've been trying and all the NA drinks. Like, it's been a really nice break um, from alcohol, I wish I would have like dieted better. Uh, you know, without all these alcoholic calories, I probably could have lost some weight. But um, 
Instead, I just was like, yeah, whatever. I'm just going to eat more. <laughs> yeah, why not make up those calories one way or the other? Who cares? Yeah. Well, uh, I, I think it's funny because since last week when we talked about um, whether or not NA was going to continue to be a big thing, I saw, I know, I think it was either Ferndale Project or Eastern Market came out with an NA beer. Oh, okay. And I thought I saw one other one. Like, just locally, I've seen posts come out about more NA beers coming out. So I like seeing the local beers have that offer. So, like, if I want to, during dry January, go, or damp January, um, go to Trivia, and I can still have a beer, but I don't have to give up on those goals. Well, and as someone who has taken a, a extended break on alcohol, uh, within, you know, beer, it's still the, the stigma of socializing without beer, because, you know, when, when you think about socializing, you think about going out, you think about playing trivia, you think about drinking, you think about going to the casino, you think about drinking, you think about, um, you know, going to an arcade, but instead you're going to go to a barcade. You think about going to get dessert, but instead you're going to Brown Dog Creamery. Like we have as millennials getting into the business ownership. I know I'm the only millennial in here. Um, the business ownership for like of creating businesses and styles like we talked about it last week too like millennials are out drinking gen x and millennials are out drinking gen z so it's a very interesting concept of where we are but we are associating alcohol with a lot of things to where now i think we're not doing a correction but i think we're realizing that we need to calm down a bit um (laughs) But that's just as, as you know, I was, I was talking to Dan earlier today and we're thinking of going to Vegas in July and you know, what's the the first thing I'm thinking of? Oh, I want to go to, you know, Chicago brewery at four Queens. I want, Oh yeah. um, (laughs) Always my first thought. (laughs) Everywhere I go, I look for the breweries first. Let's be honest. I'm leaving on Wednesday for the Dominican Republic and I've already um, downloaded and written out maps to how to get to the breweries in the area near our resort because last time I went to an all-inclusive my phone died while I was out in town and I couldn't find the brewery so I didn't get to go to that one well uh, and kind of as you bring up the point is, is that we create trips that revolve around alcohol we create um you know, we, we do things like brewery tours, like using the Michigan Brewery Map app because of, you know, where can we go get alcohol or try different alcohol? Um, and for us, obviously, we're we're being smart about it, which, you know, we, we use Uber, we drink NA beer, or we pace ourselves or we don't order all 14% beers. We hope you guys don't. Um, <laughs> but I think there's just a lot of you know, 20, I think during COVID at the beginning of COVID, we all went a little too hard and now we're all kind of like, all right, let's, this, this is the world we live in now. Let's kind of relax a little bit, but that's, that's my little montage about how millennials drink these days and how drunk we get all the time. Um, Dan, what's your article about? All right. Definitely underwhelming compared to what you brought up. (laughs) (laughs) So a French brewer has started using algae with a naturally occurring pigment to turn their beer blue. And this is an IPA that they're making. Uh, The beer with the brand name, probably not pronounced like this, but Lime, is a result of a tie-up between a firm that wants to popularize algae as a dietary supplement and a nearby craft brewery that was looking for a way to make its beverages more distinctive. So I guess turning it to Drano is what they're looking to do. Um, so my question is, you know, there are those sours out there that are random ass colors. There's a place out here that makes them after the Power Rangers. So you've got red sours, green sours, that sort of thing. Is the world ready for a blue beer? Like is Joe six pack off the street going to walk in and be like, oh, hey, give me that blue IPA. Do you guys think this is the right call or is it a little little too out there as far as what they're trying to do in the U S uh, I don't know if you're aware of this holiday, um, but it happens in March, uh, the 17th of every year where they sell green beer. Um, and people will go out of their way <laughs> to go drink green so, beer. 
that um, that's that's a fair point but are you gonna go and grab a six pack of this blue beer on the shelf on a tuesday afternoon at oh about yeah I'll, I'll, I'll go to try it and then if i like it i'll buy it again like it's it's an amazing marketing material uh, i don't know about all the dietary supplement uh abilities of it but i mean alcohol sure. alcohol's hop so it's a, a vegetable smoothie <laughs> I'm totally using that. So I totally agree. I would try it because it's blue, because uh, I'm weird. And I think a lot of people would do that as well. Um, whether or not I continue to drink it will totally depend on how well they market, how good that algae is for you. I'm not going to lie. My curiosity is if it, do, it does it change the taste of the beer. I wonder if this algae has a flavor, gives it like an off taste that people aren't used to. That'd be the one thing I'd be worried about as far as this goes. I I don't know much about ingesting algae or what algae can do in cooking or creating some type of beverage. So I I would not have the answer for you. But obviously, if it changes the flavor, then it just changes the flavor. I mean, it's no different than how we had like Arvon on and they put graham cracker and lactose and marshmallow and chocolate and banana raspberry. Oh, stop it. You're making my mouth water. <laughs> all into a sour. Yeah. All into a kettle sour. <laughs> a graham cra- cracker kettle sour. Which means my mouth's going to sour just as I'm putting it up to my lips. I think, I think one of the ingredients <laughs> might've been Benadryl too. Like, I don't know. The <laughs> Benadryl sour. <laughs> like, here y'all go. We put everything into the sour. It, they call it the uh, double downer. What is that they drink? Is it is it uh, Robitussin you make like an alcoholic drink out of that certain people do? So here, here, is you know that... what? If you made certain people like twelve year olds, no, like I don't know, <laughs> like is it twelve year olds that drink? That was watching something on TV the other day, and Isn't they, they were they doing that. About, like in high school, they always told us <laughs> in junior high and high school, they were like, "Don't drink the cough syrup." I don't know who does that or why you would, but it was like a big thing they were doing. They're, like all into it too. I don't know. There's all kinds of kids are stupid. I, I'm going to make a bold ass statement. You can agree or disagree, but I tell you what, if let's, let's use Arvon just because of the flavor profile. If you made a green death flavor of um, like, you know, NyQuil, the green death flavor, if you made that into a kettle sour, you would easily sell out one keg minimum guaranteed. <laughs> I would put money on it that people would Isn't buy the green it. Death just, flavor just licorice? I have no idea. I just always called it the green death flavor. Thanks to uh, Dennis Leary, I think was the. I'm pretty sure it's Anis. Um, but yeah, like <laughs> I, I guarantee you, if you made green a death flavor, green death flavor, <laughs> like Nyquil flavor of a kettle sour, you would easily sell a keg off. Like online pre-orders done. Um, you know what? I'm going there. I'm I'm going to tell them to make it. We're going to figure out how to make it. We're going to make it green. And I'm going to call it the GDF Kettle Sour, uh, you know, for green death flavor. Um, and, yeah, we're, we're going to do I I feel like this would easily sell. And it'll be green. And I'm I feel like you're it. onto something here. Like, get a whole oh, line of them. Off topic. Can I just say we need to get our, our a little earworm in on, the, on this French company and tell them we want it. We'd be willing to try it for them. It's not a bad idea, actually. I can say, and then we'll email. then I'm we'll start saying. on we'll start on our line of uh, medicine flavored sours, yes. like that orange flavor cough syrup that's out there. We could make that. Oh, don't do the cherry the, flavor because we the, got that in every beer out there. Yeah, that's true. Do the grape Robitussin flavor. Get that going. <laughs> Can you? You really came up with a great idea. I kind of like this. Oh, the bubble gum penicillin. Oh, oh. <laughs> that treats, that, that, from when you're like four to ten treats everything you have yeah or no even matter better. what you do Pep- no Pepto matter what Bismol you go to the doctor flavor. for you get yeah. it <laughs> <laughs> pepto that's a good one too or just that banana flavor that some of them taste like we'll just do that in a sour they all have to be sours just to make it even better <laughs> oh yeah because i mean sours you could definitely get a much better color profile on um, mm-hmm. You can get in there and you can you can do a little dance and make it uh, a better a color a lot easier than making a beer like uh, trying to do like a beer blue because obviously you're pulling algae to get a blue flavor and and we're in here just trying to make you know random drug flavors for <laughs> the local brewery. <laughs> Um, the only, so what would suck though, too, is, is that we'd probably get shut down by the MLCC. 
uh, just because it would be like too much like medicine or, you know, <laughs> there, there's probably some law we'd break, but I'm definitely going to ask. I, I am going to, uh, um, uh, I'll, you know, we have Ferndale project coming up here in a few weeks. They make a lot of sours. Maybe Ferndale project will be up for, uh, uh, some of the, the our project, the better on draft project. <laughs> it's not a bad idea. Dane would probably be into it. So let's skip. What about, what about uh brew Detroit? Don't they have the like experimental beer section? I don't know. I, do they still have that? Let's talk to them. We, we could talk I'm just to saying. them. I think we have a lot of friends. We just need to uh, find the time. Someone's willing to do it. That's for sure. Or find the person who will do it. We know some homebrewers, too. No, I want this in market. I want this sold. I I want this. (laughs) I I need to prove the bold-ass point. If we can't make this into an event, then... It's, it didn't happen. Yeah, no, not at all. It's just like if you don't post it on <laughs> – like if you drink a beer and don't check it in on Untapped, did you really drink the beer? Come on. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I would have I would have been at like the next level Kevin. like a year ago if I had to remember to check in everything I drank. Good word. <laughs> I, I remember doing it once, uh, checking in all the beers I had at a festival. And then I remember the next year, I'm like, oh, I'm just going to, you know, write it down in a notes thing and then check them all in later. <laughs> and then I'm like, that work out? The, both worked fine. I just hated my life afterwards because I'm like, oh, now I got to check them in. And when it became when it felt like it was a job, that's when I was like, all right, I don't need to do this anymore. I always say that I'm going to write them down or check them off on the list or whatever. And I get about halfway through and then. I'm chatting with this person and running off there and losing my gloves. And by the way, if you guys, uh, you know, are on untapped and you want to friend us, bod podcast, you can find out everything we drink on the show. We do use it, uh, but we just check in once a week, all of the beers we had on the show. That's it. So you'll get inundated with like 18 updates in a matter of 20 minutes. And then you'll never hear from us for the next, uh, (laughs) Six uh, six days and twenty three hours. Um, <laughs> speaking of festivals, though, the Michigan Brewers Guild's Winter Beer Fest, uh, their beer lineup, as we were uh, talking about it with Arvin, is out. Have you guys had a chance to look at it yet? I have not. So uh, it's on a website called Number One Pirate dot com. Great oh. website name. Oh, okay. Uh, but. <laughs> Get this, and this is first the one thing that I love. One, you could sort by style. So instead of just like a, a giant ass list, you can actually go in and you can sort by a specific style. I'll actually send this to you guys via the uh, the little chat program that we use. Um, but you can find all the beers, including all of the alt beers that are going to be at the festival. And by when oh. I say all of the alt beers, I mean the one Old Nation is bringing. Um <laughs> But you're able to see how many. It uh, is winter. Uh, winter. What did I say? Oh, no, I'm saying it is winter. So. I oh, would yeah, you're telling to me see it's more alt beers when it's not winter time. Okay, I hear what you're saying. I was a little confused. Um, but you can uh, find all of the IPAs. You can find all the breweries that are coming. What the breweries are bringing. Uh, so, for example, Supernatural is bringing a Hazed and Confused, which is their New England IPA. Love that beer. Uh, former guest Perrin is bringing their Fifty Nine Ten IPA and Call Me Hazy IPA. Uh, another former guest Ozone's Over the Hills and Hop Away uh, Double IPA. So yeah, plenty of They're very good beer. Plenty of beers to choose from and to look, but I'm just glad that this is such an easy to use and it's a very basic website. Like you could tell this was easily built for a phone uh, to just be able to like select a style and go. Um, so check it out. We'll put the the link in the show notes for you to be able to see, uh, which, by the way, a few of us will be at the Winter Beer Festival, um, just kind of hanging around, putzing around. Uh, if you come and find us, we'll, uh, we'll give you a token. One of us will. Uh, I don't know who's going to be there. I'll be there, hopefully. I may or may not. I may or may not be in Florida. I have to decide at the last minute. I am deciding last minute when uh, if I'm going to be at the festival. So uh, <laughs> good to see you there, Dan. Are you at, when, when do festivals kind of start up in Arizona? Do they have a? Do you have like a festival um, season? Yeah, like next week. Uh, yeah. 
is beer week out here. The uh, Arizona Strong Beer Fest is next weekend, or no, two weekends from now. And how many tokens it is, are each beer? Uh, they're usually one. Okay. It's not. It's pretty loose as far as that goes too. It's. I mean, kind of loose like it is out there. There's nothing too strict. Um, there are some festivals where they, um, it's you pay per beer. Like it's free to get in and you pay per, per beer. But they do a lot of festivals too. They'll do like the taco and beer festival. They'll do the taco and tequila festival. You know, we got all these spring training um, fields out here for all the baseball teams. So they hold a lot of things like that at those throughout the year. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. That'd be a a great way to kind of like, you know, entertain people while you're out there. I remember there was, I think a wine festival when I went out there um, with you, when we noticed it when we were walking to mother brunch, um, Oh, we probably walked past it. Yeah, I remember that now. That goes on every year. There's a lot, all kinds of things like that out here. Uh, but Wendy, what's what's the news article you wanted to chat about today? So I happen to be uh, rifling through Google today and found an article from the Denver Denver Beer Post about um, a Colorado beer guy who is. Uh, drinking his way through every Colorado, every brewery in Colorado. And I thought I'd bring it up because, you know, this seems like a guy right after my own heart. He, uh, um, his name is Paul Myhill. He drank his way through every brewery in Colorado in 18 months, uh, which I think is amazing because there's over 400 breweries in Colorado. Um, you know, I, I tried it at one point. I know we've had people who have done it. We've had people who've gotten close to doing it. Um, I never tried to do every brewery in Michigan in a whole year. That was way more than I thought I could could uh, bite off there. But um, we, we started out. Go ahead. I was going to say, we did not have her on the show, but Emily Bennett. Um, yes. She, Am I beer girl? Yep. Mitten she, beer girl. Mitten beer girl. Yep. She did it. Um, including going to founders when they opened like a week before the year was over. Um, so that was a, uh, a great little story that you could find, but that was also, I mean, that was still only as much as we say only, I think that was only like 340 or 330, uh, breweries at that time, which were according to the Michigan brewery map app, which is uh, correct. Cause I manage it, um, over 400. Uh, but you would also have to, if you're looking to get every brewery and you want to be true to, uh, doing it, uh, you'd have to go to, uh, both terminals at, uh, DTW because one terminal has Atwater and Jolly Pumpkin and one terminal has, uh, Gordon Biersch. Yep. So I, that actually brings up another point in the article because he did the, he, it started out with 30 and 30. And he beat that. So he went to 100 and 100 and 100. And then once he hit 365, he's like, well, visiting everything doesn't seem too far off. Um, And he kind of started looking at going other places. So um, he actually stated in there that he's been to he probably went to 150 out of state breweries over the last year and a half. And I'm just wondering how you guys if you guys think that's like crazy like how many times do you go on vacation and you hit 150 breweries out of state in, in a year and a half he's going hard he's going the papa john's route you know the whole 40 pizzas in 30 days it's kind of the route this guy's going it's kind of interesting that, that's kind of the way i feel i would love it if we could get him on the show because i have a million and one questions for him especially that 150 in a year and a half because when i went to denver i hit 17 breweries um i went to south carolina and we hit like 10 breweries so I mean, that would still be to hit 150 breweries. That would be at 20 a pop. That's like 10 vacations. He might travel for work. Um, Maybe just because the amount of times I've been to Seattle and didn't double down on any any brewery like and I hit probably 40 breweries in the Seattle area. Um, Man, I I don't know know how you didn't go back. Go back to um, Machine. What is it? Machine, whatever. So I can't think of the name. Machine House is Machine House. Thank you. South of downtown Seattle. 
Um, which means that it's a commitment to go there because you are stuck down there until traffic is done. Yeah, um, traffic is bad there. Whereas for me, like there's da- all the downtown Seattle breweries, then all the Ballard breweries, and then all the Kenmore brewery. Like there's a lot of sections of craft beer that is in a certain area, and I always stayed north in Northgate. Um, which is north of Seattle. It's technically Seattle, but north of Seattle. Um, So I always stayed up there because based on the timings of me going into the city for work, I never hit traffic. And it was like $100 a night cheaper to stay up there. So, you know, for, for me back then, and for those of you that like don't travel for work, there are business organizations that if you go and you travel, like you'll get a certain stipend, but if you don't spend it, you can get money back from your business for not spending the money. Um, so I would get like an extra $150 Amazon card just to stay up there. Nice. Um, so you said the person did 30 and 30 and then tried for a hundred and a hundred. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar with the hot passport, uh, it is a, I used to have one right next to me. Um, basically a booklet that you get and each one, you get two beers at 50% off other places. It's buy one, get one free, but you can't get free beer here in Michigan. So it's two at 50% off each. Um, now on the hop passport race, the winner of each state actually gets a free trip to GABF. Um, really? Yep. So if you guys go to Amazing Brewery Race, the hashtag on Instagram, you can kind of see who the the big players are, we'll call them. Um, one of them I got a chance to uh, meet and chat with. His name's Paul. Really nice guy. He was last year's winner in Michigan. Um, he was actually at one point losing Michigan and was so far behind that he went to West Virginia and won West Virginia. He lives in Michigan. Um, but he went and won West Virginia's brewery race. So this guy is currently at over. So as of February 1st, he was at 56 breweries that he was at. Now, these are just hot passport breweries, which means he's skipping over other breweries to go to other breweries to go to just hot passport breweries. So, uh, there are people who go just to, you know, they, they go for this because obviously him and there's another guy called Mumbles, uh, which if you look up on Instagram, again, Amazing Brewery Race, the hashtag, you could find it all. Uh, yeah, these people, I I don't know how they do it. And I used to go to breweries all the time. Um, but this dude, like, and he'll also, like, if you look at uh, his Instagram, he hasn't mapped out like all the breweries he's going to, and he's got like different colored pins for the breweries that he's going to hit at different trips, um, and checks them off. Yeah. It's, he, he plans this. So I can't tell Wendy, if you're looking at all this stuff, <laughs> I'm, looking, I'm sorry, I totally got sidetracked. <laughs> oh, I, I could see I'm how like, enthralled you Oh my God, I need are. to do this. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, I totally need to do this. This was not available when I was doing it. I was all by myself. There was no hot passport when I started doing it. And (laughs) I was like making phone calls and trying to find stuff online and asking people when I got there, where should I go next? Because it's there's only two breweries listed here, but there's four in the city. So I that's why I love when when I I was used to travel um, for work and I would go and sit down at a brewery and I I would always ask the bartender, beer tender or whatever. I'm like, where do you go for beer? Yep. Um, and after a while you kind of start a circle of it's, you know, the same three or four sites, everyone kind of refers each other. Uh, but I, that's the opportunity that I, I was blessed with, with all the traveling that I was able to do was to be able to do it. And I'm, I'm looking and there's no way I'm going to be able to count what this guy did, but the guy that we're referring to mumbles, I mean, he literally just checked into Schmaz, uh, earlier today. Um, he was at Thorn Apple earlier. He was at Big Boiler, Flat River, Complexity, um, just so far today, and it's seven forty-seven. So he did hit Meckley's though. Meckley's is such a great brewery. Um, 
easily one of my my top picks for everyone to to go check out uh sorry i kind of like overran your topic wendy <laughs> oh but... it, it's okay because i mean that's kind of where i was going with it was like where are the places that you would do what are the like i love hearing about stuff like this man i know a whole ton of people that would take part in this if they knew it was out there well and you know what is out there the michigan brewery map app and you know what I you totally can do uh, you know what you can do with the map app is you could check off breweries that you've been to. So if you wanted to hit every single one this year, I mean, it's only February. You could still do it. You could go. Yeah, I mean, you'd have to, you know, do more than one a day. So 40 breweries in 30 days. You got it. Yeah. I have to take Graham along. I mean, That'd be fun. there's so many breweries on farms <laughs> with amazing views like Burnt Marshmallow, Gabriel Farms. Oh. Um, you know, there, there are a lot of places, Meckley's, she would love Meckley's. Um, uh, yeah, like there, there's plenty to do. You could check them in and each place tells you what they serve. So if you're looking for, you know, maybe not, you want to go to the brewery, but you maybe just want wine, a glass of wine or, uh, you know, a little bit of bourbon, like a half pour, uh, it tells you which breweries have spirits, which breweries have food. So you're not trying to guess if they have uh, a food truck there or not. Cause that's always so a gamble. My- my favorite thing about the map app is when I am out and we're in an area, I can choose to pick the breweries that are open in that area. And it will show me the closest one that's open or that has whatever I'm looking for. And that's what I really liked because I didn't even have to waste time trying to go to places that weren't open or I couldn't get into. There is also just a, I mean, this basically is turning into an ad read for the Michigan Brewery Map app, which is <laughs> I was fine. about to ask, is this a commercial? Uh, <laughs> so we're going to be adding a list view for closest to just instead of looking at a map, you can just see a list of breweries and you'll also be able to do an open now. Uh, you can see open for a specific day of the week, but not an open this moment. So we're going to be adding those two things later this year. Um but uh, we're only a two-man team. And by two-man team, I mean one guy does all the work and I just tell him what to do. Um, so that's <laughs> that's what that two-man team is. Um, Use it. That's what I do for the team. Well, we appreciate that. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's going to do it. I don't think we have any other news articles we wanted to talk about today. Um Nothing else really going on. Our guest uh, kind of no-showed us, so it's going to be a quick uh, uh, night. Real quick, I do want to yeah, make a go plug for, for the um, beard, Beers Without Beards Festival. Uh, we just found out today that Danny and I are going to be going and checking it out and bringing you some content from there. So I did want to bring that up. Um, That's over I in Portland, the- Maine in April. Yes, and they are selling tickets right now for any of the women in our area who would like to go. Anyone can go. You don't have to be a a woman only to attend, correct? (laughs) You don't have to be a woman only, but I think it's really awesome. Like, I am really excited about it. I got to do the online portion last year, and I'm really excited to be able to go and meet some of these women in, in person and check out what they're doing. All right. Well, that's going to do it for the Better Odds awesome. Draft podcast. Uh, hopefully our guest shows up next week. Um, <laughs> what do we got next week? <laughs> uh, next week is Bella Snow uh, Soft Ale, which is a low ABV, low calorie uh, beer maker. Yeah. Do they ship any out to us? Uh, they are. They, they will be sending us a little bit more. Um, I gave the ones that they gave to us to our writers to do a recap. So they will be sending it to us to do, uh, um, another one, but we've got, nice. uh, Bella snow coming up followed by beer de Mac, uh, out of Mackinac city. Um, then we're doing a Thursday show the week of the beer festival with exhibit a out of mass. They sent us beer, um, and harmony brewing, um, which is out of the west side of the state, they'll be coming in on the third. So we got a lot of great shows coming up. Uh, stay tuned, like us on all of our social medias, and of course, check us out on our TikToks. Maybe we'll do some more TikTok stuff this week. Um, so that's going to do it. No matter what you think of your beer, we think it's better on draft. Have a good night. Peace. Thanks, Wendy.